Hey everyone, Todd from Slideshow FX once again. And in this video, I'm going to give you a quick navigation of our new After Effects Pro Toolkit for the Stream Deck Plus device. Now I'm going to primarily focus on the dial actions in this profile. We'll explore the scrolling of the timeline, take a look at how you can move your images around in the, in the composition window, how you can navigate and adjust keyframes, adjust your tracking points, work with your layers in the timeline, using zoom in the composition or in the timeline, navigating masks, adjusting different text parameters, working in your 3D windows. And I'm gonna show you how you can use the dials to make adjustments to any effects that you apply to a layer. So at this point, I'm going to assume you've gone through the installation process, either by following the instructions in the PDF that's included in the pack, or you've taken a look at our installation video. Either way, you should be up and running at this point before you start this navigation. All right, so in the main page, this is what you're presented with. We have eight different profiles that are accessible to us right from the main page, and we'll just go into them one at a time here. So we go into File. This, of course, allows you to manage your file in the project window. Now we've included, for convenience, our scroll dial on the bottom left here. Now this key exists in almost every one of the, our profiles. There's a couple small exceptions, but for the most part, that is the first dial on every profile. And you'll see that it gives an indication of what page number you got. This one is indicating five pages in this profile. And of course, how you navigate through the different pages in this profile, you just swipe the dial strip. Page two, three, four, and page five. And swiping once more takes you back to page one. You can, of course, swipe the opposite direction. So as indicated by the icon there, rotating this dial is going to allow us to navigate our timeline by default it's indicating that we're going to be every uh, rotation of the dial takes us one frame ahead and one frame back by pressing in the dial the function will change you can see it's now indicated 10 so rotating each click will now advance or rewind 10 frames press again you get back to the one frame advance now you'll notice that there's a small icon also included here. This indicates what action will take place when you press the dial strip itself. So if I press the dial strip, it will immediately start doing a play preview for us. Pressing it again, we'll stop. Now the next dial over, when we're in the project panel, will allow us to navigate the different items in our project panel. So we can move up and down and select whichever file we want to access. And clicking on this style strip will load whatever file is currently selected into our current composition. Now a lot of our dials have what is called a dial stack. And that's what I showed you here by pressing. It indicates that there is a different action that is accessible to us. And you'll know that there is a dial stack by this little icon up here indicating a dial stack is in place and there are more functions to be accessed. But you'll notice on dials two and three of this profile, they don't have a dial stick indicator. That means that these are the only functions for these dials. Now on the third dial, similar to the second, but it extends our selection. So by rotating back and forth, it will allow us to extend our selection in our project panel. Going to dial two, we'll take it back to a single. And its press function does the same thing as it does over here. It will add the currently selected item to our composition. So you can explore the different keys that are up here that are all the shortcuts that would be associated with the file and the edit menu in After Effects. Okay, okay, bouncing out, we're gonna take a look at our composition profile. Now, as mentioned earlier, on the bottom left is our scrolling dial. And here it's indicating that we're on page one of six pages. So scrolling through the different pages here, you can see we have a number of shortcut functions accessible. And then swipe back to 
page one. Now, on the second dial, this indicates that we can move our currently selected layer on the y-axis. So, by rotating this, you can see I'm raising or lowering my currently selected layer. And the press function indicates that it will reveal the position parameter. And you can see I have some keyframes there. We're going to get to keyframes in just a minute. Now pressing on the dial, you can see that there's a dial stack indicator here. So pressing on the dial will allow us to move in the Y axis by in a course action. We can raise and lower our currently selected image. Pressing again allows us to access the X axis. So rotating this, we're moving on the X, a factor of one, pressing in again, and we can move in the X for a factor of 10. Pressing in again takes us back to where we were. Third dial gives us rotation. So rotation at a factor of one, and then pressing in, factor of 10. Now the fourth dial allows us to scale. Scale by a factor of one, or we call it scaling fine. Pressing in allows us to scale in a course. And of course, pressing will reveal the scale property. Let's swipe to the next page. Once again, scrolling, as always, takes place here. Second one in allows us to adjust our opacity. So let's press on it so we can view the, the opacity property. And we can go down by a factor of 1%. Pressing in takes us down a factor of 10%. So we can adjust our opacity. The third dial in allows us to navigate through our different masks. So we can select which one we want to work on. Pressing the button will add a new mask. Now on the fourth dial, this allows us to zoom in on our timeline. So by zooming forward and backwards, that allows us to zoom in, and we can also zoom to fit the entire timeline by pressing the dial strip. Now pressing in this will allow us to zoom in on the composition. And of course, pressing the button will fit to our screen. Scroll again on the first dial. On the second dial, this allows us to navigate between the different panels in our current window. So I have just the two here. There's the layer, there's the composition. And if I press this button, this now makes the timeline active and I can navigate through all the different panels in this window. Third dial has our mask feature again, and the fourth dial has our zoom. Same thing here, and here, and page five, and then we're back to page one. All right, let's go back to the main page, and we're gonna go into layer here. Once again, scroll feature on the first dial. On the second dial, this allows us to move our currently selected layer up and down the layer stack. So I'll, current, I'll select our, our top image here, and I can move it up and down our layer stack. Now if I take it all the way down and then press the button, it will immediately take it to the top of the, uh, of the layer stack. Now by pressing in, this allows us to select which layer we want to be working with. So I can select this layer, press in again, and then move it up or down. Let's select our top layer again, and the third dial allows us to shift our layer. So we're shifting it up and down in time. And that's by a factor of uh, one frame. We can go, go 10 frames at a time and it's much coarser action. And pressing on this dial strip will take our timeline playback head to the beginning of our currently selected layer. And on the fourth dial we have our Usual zoom, you can zoom in and out. And on the second page, same thing. Third page, the same. And on the fourth page, we have our position, scale, and rotation here for convenience. 
our fifth page, you see where I have our scroll. On the second dial, we have our moving layer. But on the third dial, the third and fourth dials have changed. Now what this allows us to do is adjust the values of various parameters. So I'm going to give an example of, I've got a limitary uh, color effect here, and I'll open it up here. So if we click on any one of these values here, and I'll start with saturation, for example. So you click on it so it's available. And start rotating the third dial here. We're adjusting that value. So I can quickly adjust the value, and then using the fourth dial, I can jump down to any other of these parameters here. So I can quickly adjust contrast. And go down and work on shadows, lighten the shadows up. Go back up and do temperature. Very quickly make those adjustments. Now, with this adjustment dial, you can see we have a dial stack, so we have different degrees of how much we can adjust. Right now we're on the coarse function. So if I press in, now we're on ultra fine, or I can go to fine. So we can rotate through until we find the right adjustment level for us to work with. So I'm still still on temperature here. I'll work with fine, and you'll see that it goes down. On this parameter, it's going down one full integer at a time, up or down. If I press in and we go coarse, it will now go down 10 at a time. And if I press a third time, you can see we have ultra fine. This will go at 0.1, so it's a much finer adjustment. Press once more, we're back to fine and full, uh, whole numbers. Now, once you're finished adjusting all of your parameters, you can press the dial strip of either one of these, uh, the number three or number four, and it will do an enter, and it will enter in the value, so you're no longer editing those values. Okay, let's now move to page six, and you see we have some keyframe functions here. So I'm going to select a keyframe, and we'll zoom in here so you can see what we're working with. And just by adjusting this dial, you can see we can move our keyframe. If we have several collected, if we have several selected, we'll be able to move them all as a group. And you can see that's a, a dial stack as well. When we're rotating this, we're, rot we're moving the keyframes one frame at a time. Pressing in allows us to move them up or down 10 frames at a time. Now the third dial, we can navigate to our different keyframes that are currently visible in our currently selected layer. Let's swipe down to page 7. It's the same thing, we have our keyframes available to us. Now we see our moving of layers and shifting of layers again. Now on page 10, we have a new dial here that allows us to change the blending mode. So by rotating the second dial, you can see we can change the blending mode of our currently selected layer. And pressing in the dial strip takes us back to a normal blend mode. Third dial, once again, is navigating our panels. And then the fourth is our zooming. One more swipe takes us back to page one of our layer. Now you can see in this profile, we have another profile accessible to us, which is the mask profile. So we select this, and these are functions all related to masking. We see a repeat of the keys we've already explored. We have blending and the mask mode and the zoom on four pages. Take us back, takes us back into the layer profile, and once more, takes us back to me. Now we can get into the animation profile. Once again, this presents us with the scroll, shifting keyframes, navigating keyframes, and zoom. We have six pages in this profile. We can, once again, move our layer, shift our layer. We have the adjustment parameters here as well. We have position, rotation, and scale. And the final page, this is one of the few pages that does not have the scroll feature on the first dial. Instead, it's populated by all the different tracking controls that we could take advantage of. So let's go into track motion, and so we can get a track point here. 
I'll just position it into a spot here and we're gonna zoom way in so we can get a good look at what we're working with here. Okay, so with our tracking point in place, if we wanna do some fine adjustments on that tracking point, we can just use our first dial to track on the X axis, second dial tracks on the Y. Of course, pressing in these two can give us a more coarse function. Just helping you to line up exactly where you need that point to go. And you can see that moves both our attach point and our tracking window. The second two dials will adjust without moving the attach point it will move just our tracking region. And the same thing if you need to have a course function as well. Swipe once more takes us back to page one. And you can see we have a couple additional profiles accessible to us here. The first of which is keyframe labels. We have three pages of keyframe labels that we can apply. So just to show you how that works, select whatever keyframes you want to label, press the button. So close that, they've all been assigned that color. Now if we swing down to the third page, you can see we have a series of selection keys that we can, if we have, say for example, this key is selected, we want to select all in that particular label group, that key will do it for you. And of course they're divided between on all layers or visible and selected. So you can experiment with those and use which key you prefer. And of course we have our keyframe functions on the dials available to us in this profile. Also in the animation profile we can get to expressions. Now these are expressions that can be applied to the various properties on your currently selected layer. So just having a very simple shape layer here we can see what it does. By pressing wiggle, for example, it will then perform a wiggle for us. You can experiment with these. There's five pages of expressions here that you can experiment with. And we'll go back out to the main page. We'll go into character. This is, of course, working with your text. Let's say I'm going to select uh, just one word here. And the second dial allows us to change the font size, so by rotating we change the font size. Pressing in we can change it on a more coarse level. And once you're done adjusting, pressing the dial strip icon is an enter function. Now let's select everything here. I'm going to demonstrate the next dial which is tracking or kerning, whichever way you want to refer to it as. You can go in between an individual character and adjust kerning. And we do have the option to go in a fine or coarse amount. Selecting all this text again on the fourth dial allows us to adjust our letting. And we can, of course, go in a coarse or fine adjustment. Moving over to page three, you'll see that we have our font size as, as we had before, but we also have an insertion point dial. So this allows us to move our insertion point wherever we need it, pressing it again will allow us to go up or down a line and then pressing once more will extend the selection that we've got so we can now control what part of our text that we want to control. Page four gives us our position, rotation, and scale. Page five gives us opacity and we also have the ability to change our baseline. So by moving up and down, we can change the baseline of our currently selected text. Page six gives us some keyframe controls. And page seven allows us 
to move our layer or shift our layer, as we demonstrated earlier. Once more, back to page one, and then this will take us back to main. Now we can go into 3D. Now I've got some 3D layers in this composition, but let's add a, a camera layer here to this. And you can see that uh, we have our usual scrolling that exists here. But these dials allow us to cycle through the different camera modes. So we're looking at the different orbit modes, the different pan modes, and the different dolly modes. Swiping takes us through, and now on page three, we can make a global selection of whether we're working with orbit, pan, or dolly. Instead of selecting which kind of orbit, pan, and dolly, this just will change the camera for us. And on the third dial, let's just change to a uh, different view here. On the third dial, this will you know, select my layer here. On the third dial, this will change the gizmo that we get working with. Right now, it's on the default wireframe. But if we change this, we then change to the 3D position gizmo, the, the scale, and the rotation. And then pressing takes us back to the wireframe gizmo. In page four, we're back to our camera tools. And back out to our main page. And then we have window, which just gives us a scroll feature. It allows us to access our windows where we need them. What you likely would use this for, a lot of people like to customize and move things around how they like to work. Personally, I, I will customize, I'll make a copy of my profile and I will customize it for a particular job that I'm working on. If I'm doing a particular amount of things, let's say if I'm doing something that's a lot of 3D work, I'll pull 3D stuff together along with some other functions that are in other profiles that I just happen to need to bounce to very quickly. So I'll just quickly build my own quick little profile. It takes like a minute or two just to pull in the elements that you want, collect them together into one page and allows you to work. That's how I like to work. I move things around as I need them. And so that's why these windows are provided here. You can use them as is, or you can copy and paste and move them to where you need them. Same thing with the tools. You have all the tools available to you in one page, or you can copy and paste these where you need them so they're more accessible for the job you're working on. So that's it. That's the whole AE Pro Tool Kit for the Stream Deck Plus device. I hope you guys find it useful. I hope it improves your, your workflow and makes things go easier for you in your sessions. Really look forward to hearing how you guys are implementing this tool into your daily workflow. Until next time, we'll talk to you soon.